Here's Jimmy. Is he more meme than man? We are talking today, of course, about Dr. Oz, who I have been wondering over the past couple months, is he, has he transcended out of being a man, a human being, and is now in the world of being a meme and existing as meme lore instead? Or is he going to become part of our Senate and, and run part of the US and have, and have power in government? Is he a meme or is he a powerful man? Hopefully today we'll find out. Today, we are covering Dr. Oz, who is, much like Dr. Phil, part of the Oprah Cinematic Universe. After having many controversies, including pushing shady diet products, getting involved in a weird, biased olive oil lawsuit, and hosting a LGBTQ conversion therapist on his show back in the day, a lot of people have rightly become skeptical of Dr. Oz, once known as a surgeon who was very good at his job who later became a TV personality and self-help grifter, Dr. Oz is no stranger to controversy, which now more than ever he has found himself in as he continues his campaign for the U.S. Senate as a representative of Pennsylvania. So today I thought we would take a deep dive into Oz and look at the man behind the curtain. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should take up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. If you're new here, take a minute and go ahead and subscribe, because multiple times a week, I put out new videos all about books and business, which includes discussions like this of the self-help guru, scammer, grifter types who are trying to make money off of us and our insecurities. Nice. Nice and also trying to gain power in the U.S. government. Dr. Oz running for the Senate was not on my 2020's decade bingo card, but here we are together. Now, before we get into everything today, I want to let you know that today I am not going to be drinking any disgusting smoothies that Dr. Oz would drink. I am not going to be taking weird diet supplements with Dr. Oz. Instead, today, I am going to be eating some snacks that I actually like and enjoy eating, such as the snacks that I got from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Monk Pack a brand of plant-based, gluten-free, non-GMO nut and seed bars that have become some of my favorites to eat during the past few months. Two things are true about me. First, this won't surprise you at all, but I am extremely busy running this channel, running my second channel for morning live streams, running my business, writing books, going to the gym, being an overprotective dog mom, and more. Second, I have a huge sweet tooth and can never get enough sweet treats. Monk Pack granola bars have been a perfect fit for both of these things. Because these bars are both sweet and low sugar, they satisfy those sweet cravings I get all day without filling me with too much extra sugar. Additionally, they're great for me to eat when I'm in motion, walking my dog, walking to the gym, or while I'm working on something at my desk. Monk Pack keto granola bars and nut and seed bars have one gram of sugar, two to three grams of net carbs, and 150 calories per bar. Monk Pack also offers a variety of really good flavors my favorite of which has been the dark chocolate sea salt and the caramel sea salt flavors. I just think those flavors are so good because they're a little crunchy, a little salty, and very sweet all at the same time, and that combination just really tastes great to me. So you can choose from a variety of different flavors as well for whichever you prefer. If you're interested in trying them, you can get 20% off of your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering the code SAVVY at checkout, or just by simply clicking the link in my description down below to get 20% off. Keep in mind also that Monk Pack does offer a 100% happiness guarantee, so if you don't like the bars for any reason at all, they'll gladly exchange the product or refund your money for you, whichever you prefer. So if you want to enjoy some sweet and crunchy snacks this fall without all the extra sugar, check out the link in my description below and don't forget to use the code SAVVY for 20% off of your order. Thank you again to Monk Pack for sponsoring me today. Now, back to the video. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Additionally, I want to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters who have been instrumental in helping this channel continue to be what it is and helping me continue to put out more videos constantly. I greatly appreciate all of your support. Patreon supporters 
supporters' names are up on the screen, and if you take a look in the description below, Patreon supporters who give $5 a month or up have the option to link their own stuff in the description below, so take a look in the description below, and if you see something you like there, like a, a small business or an artist's work or something, you can support them as well because they are awesome small business supporters just like you guys. Now let's get into Dr. Oz, meme or man. First thing we're gonna do is take a look at this article from The Scientific American called Dr. Oz Shouldn't Be a Senator or a doctor. So much like how earlier this week we talked about Dr. Phil and we talked about how Dr. Phil used to be a licensed and practicing psychologist but has completely let medical ethics go out the window in favor of making himself as much money as possible, Dr. Oz is similar. While he used to be a practicing surgeon, he has once again let medical ethics and let his personal ethics and anything else fall by the wayside in favor of promoting what is going to get him the most views and the most money. At least that's how it seems to me personally. So just as a brief disclaimer, this article is in the opinion section of Scientific American, which is why the article is going to be biased from the perspective of the reporter. This is not objective journalism. However, I do think that this author makes a lot of good points, which we should discuss. So let's talk about it. While holding a medical license, Mehmet Oz, widely known as Dr. Oz, has long pushed misleading, science-free, and unproven alternative therapies such as homeopathy, as well as fad diets, detoxes, and cleanses. Some of these things have been potentially harmful, including uh, you know, this stuff that people tried to claim could cure COVID and prevent COVID and you didn't need to get a vaccine because you could just take the hydroxychloroquine instead. This assertion has been thoroughly debunked. He's built a tremendous following around his lucrative but evidence-free advice. So are we surprised that Oz is running as a Republican for the U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania? No, we are not. Misinformation spouting celebrities seem to be a GOP favorite. This move is very on brand for both Oz and the Republican Party. Now, I just want to say, when it comes to politicians, whether you are Republican, Democrat, Independent, anything else, can we stop? Can we stop just having like TV personalities and just general celebrities becoming high up people in government? Can we stop having people who are just like, especially people who are pushers of medical misinformation? It does seem to be more common with the Republican Party to be pushing people who are pseudoscientists, and I'm not sure why that is right now, but that's definitely a thing that has been going on. Recently, when I was looking at stuff related to Matt Walsh and when I did my review of What is a Woman, I talked a little bit about the appeal to nature fallacy, and it may be because currently there are so many Republican talking heads, people like you know, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, those type. There are a lot of the big influencers on the right wing side of the political aisle seem to kind of ignore the appeal to nature fallacy and have a lot of what they believe hinge on the idea that what is natural is inherently better. So that's why you have people like Matt Walsh coming out here and saying, well, it's not okay for children to take hormones if they need to transition because that involves putting a chemical in your body, but a 16 year old girl having a baby is natural, so it should still happen. Like you get this weird, like completely fallacious and often abusive to children type of argument, but the whole thing hinges on the fact that something being a natural process makes it automatically better. And I mean, that could also be, this is all conspiracy theory, I guess, but this could also be tied into the fact that if we look at companies like Amway, MLM type companies, a lot of those companies are kind of tied in with the Republican Party. And also, just to be clear, like a Democratic politician, Bill Clinton, people like him, there have been plenty that have promoted MLM companies and spoken for MLMs as well. MLMs are kind of baked into the US government at this point, and it's kind of scary. But my whole point is a, a lot of times people who are anti-vaxxers, people who are pushing MLMs where they want to take or eat essential oils instead of taking medicine and things like that, are often more right-leaning people. And I don't know if it's because of religious beliefs or I don't know if it's because of this type of appeal to nature fallacy that seems to be very popular with the right right now. And I'm not sure why that is, but that kind of makes sense as to why someone like Dr. Oz would run as a Republican if he is someone known for pushing pseudoscience because he could say, hey, I've got this natural solution to something and then sell you a completely scam product. It's the whole snake oil thing, right? Snake oil's natural, cyanide's natural, water's a chemical, you know, like all of these terms, people just throw them around and it doesn't mean anything. But yeah, it's quite a shame that this has been making such a, a splash in the people who are supposed to be responsible for running our country. His candidacy is a reminder that tolerating and 
and or enabling celebrity pseudoscience, I'm thinking of you, Oprah, can have serious and enduring consequences. Much of Oz's advice was bunk before the pandemic. It is bunk now, and there is no reason to assume it won't be bunk after, even if he becomes Senator Oz. Indeed, as Senator Oz, it's all but guaranteed that he would bring pseudoscience to the table when crafting and voting on legislation that affects the health and welfare of Americans. Before the pandemic, I often heard people argue that the wellness woo coming from celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow, Tom Brady, and Oz was mostly harmless noise. If people want to waste their money on ridiculous vagina eggs, bogus diets, or unproven alternative remedies, why should we care? Buyer beware, a fool in their money, a sucker is born every minute, etc. But now we know more than ever that pop culture can, for better or worse, have a significant impact on health benefits and behaviors. Indeed, one need only consider the degree to which Jenny McCarthy gave life to the vile claim that autism is linked to vaccination. Celebrity figures like podcast host Joe Rogan and football player Aaron Rodgers... <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, also known as Throw Rogan or Karen Rogers, have greatly added to the chaotic information regarding the COVID-19 by magnifying unsupported claims. I've never been happier to be a Packers hater as knowing that Aaron Rodgers is a Karen. So yes, celebrities' health bunk matters a great deal, in part because the size of their megaphone greatly amplifies the spread of the misinformation they believe. A study by the Reuters Institute for the Study of Journalism at the University of Oxford looked at hundreds of bits of COVID misinformation and found that 20% of the claims had a prominent individual such as a politician or entertainer as a primary source, and that such top-down distribution ultimately accounted for 69%. Nice. Nice. Look at that 69. Look how nice that 69 looks. 69% of social media engagement with the misinformation as ordinary people shared such celebrity content. Despite facing mounting criticism for his embrace of harmful pseudoscience and the provision of evidence-free health advice, Oz remains connected to Columbia University's medical school and is a licensed physician. In 2014, he was called in front of the Senate Subcommittee on Consumer Protection over misleading statements he made on his popular television show, The Dr. Oz Show. During the hearing, one senator went so far as to tell America's doctor, anointed thus by Oprah, Oprah Cinematic Universe, that the scientific community is almost monolithic against you. And while Oz has not been officially sanctioned by a regulatory body, the Federal Trade Commission, for example, has gone after fraudsters who have appeared on his show, but the agency hasn't taken direct action against him, that doesn't mean he shouldn't be disciplined. His affiliation with Columbia and the fact that he still has a license seems especially baffling at a time when the spread of health misinformation has been recognized as one of this era's most challenging health policy issues. Given all that he has done to promote science-free medicine, how has Oz's license not been revoked? So not only is Dr. Oz still considered to be somewhat of a medical authority, despite the fact that time and time again, a lot of the pseudoscientific claims he supported on his show have been proven false, and in some cases even dangerous, such as his COVID misinformation, not only has he still retained his credentials as a doctor, but he is also now running for Senate. So let's take a look into Dr. Oz's campaign for the US Senate, take a look into his opponent, and then take a look at the meme war that has sprung up between these two memely men. So Dr. Oz's whole theme on his campaign website is all medicine themed. He's like, I'm a doctor, I'm Dr. Oz. He says the right medicine on his, his campaign page. He said, today America's heartbeat is in a code red in need of a defibrillator to shock it back to life. Many of us feel like we're in the adjacent operating room armed with insights and already scrubbed up but reluctant to leave our quiet, serene setting for the chaos next door. But for me, stepping into the political arena is the right thing to do. So. I will say this metaphor, this extended metaphor is better executed than Dave Hollis's whole boat thing in the Built for Courage book. Extended metaphors can be a little hard to keep going, but honestly, I don't believe that Dr. Oz wrote this himself, but whoever wrote it, his, his ghostwriter, his copywriter, whoever, this whole like health comparison and doctor comparison, kind of clever wordplay, I'll give him that. But at the same time, his campaign could not possibly be worse. Now, if you are only reading his first page, this could sound like a good thing to start with. For example, witnessing our nation's failings of COVID, I learned that when you mix politics and medicine, you get politics instead of solutions. That's why I'm running for United States Senate, to help fix the problems and to help us heal. 
Well, that sounds great, right? Because one of the biggest issues with COVID is that people made it political in the first place. Why did it become considered a right-wing thing to do to not wear a mask or a left-wing thing to do to get a vaccine? What did any of those things have to do with political candidates other than that there were candidates like Trump supporting misinformation out there that if you were to follow that candidate or that politician's views to the letter, then you would end up supporting that and doing those things as well. But in reality, making a national health crisis into a political battleground is stupid and it's definitely not productive for curing the disease or for helping people guard against it or for helping us not spread this disease to others, right? Well, I mean, I would trust Dr. Oz that that's what he truly believed if he didn't promote COVID misinformation on his show and let's take a look at the issues. Let's look at the issues on this. This is why you can't just look at the first page. You gotta go into the issues page. No, Dr. Oz, I'm not giving you money. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Let's start with response to COVID-19. Not giving you money, Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz is a world-class heart surgeon who holds numerous patents and has written hundreds of original peer-reviewed publications. That doesn't say anything about COVID. He knows the truth, the data, and the science about combating COVID and understands how it really affects you and your family. While elites with yards tell those without yards. <laughs> is that is that the metric of, of how successful you are, whether or not you have a yard? I don't have a yard. I bet Dr. Oz does have a yard. I don't have a yard. I live in an apartment. Anyway, while elites with yards sell those without yards to stay inside where the virus was waiting and mask up, Dr. Oz has been putting his expertise to work on behalf of us. Dr. Oz is opposed to prolonged business shutdowns and he believes it is critical to keep our children in school because the science overwhelmingly supports it. That doesn't tell me much about your beliefs on COVID, Dr. Oz. You just said, I'll follow the science. I'm a doctor. Uh, I'm not here for appeal to authority or ad hominem fallacies today, Dr. Oz. I know that you're a doctor, but what you didn't say here is whether you support people getting vaccinated. You didn't tell me that. That's kind of important, okay? Now let's look at some more issues. No, I'm not giving you money. Protect innocent life. Innocent life is very important. For example, if you are innocent of a crime and have been falsely accused of one and are waiting on death row to experience capital punishment and you end up receiving the death penalty for a crime you didn't commit, well, your innocent life deserves to be protected. Similarly, if you are awaiting trial in jail and being held there because you couldn't afford bail, which disproportionately happens to low-income Americans, and you were stuck there and you ended up dying in jail because of something like, I don't know, maybe COVID spreading to you because you can't social distance in a jail cell, or something like just how long the whole system takes and maybe you were elderly and couldn't get good medical care in there, and you died as a result, your innocent life was now violated as well. So let's see what Dr. Oz's plans are to protect innocent life. I'm not giving you money. Dr. Oz is a successful heart surgeon. He has literally held a beating heart in his hands. And I've held your mom's boobs in my hands, Dr. Oz, but I'm not a successful boob surgeon. Does that mean I'm, I'm protecting innocent boobs? I'm glad no one protected my innocent boobs because I chopped three quarters of those things off six months ago and I've never looked back. He knows how precious life is and is 100% pro-life. Now I'm assuming pro-life here refers to the fact that Dr. Oz is not in favor of abortion. So I don't understand how holding a beating heart in your hands makes you against abortion. Also, he, he has listed zero plans here to protect innocent life. I'm assuming based on this, that all of the innocent life he's talking about, because when people say pro-life or pro-choice, they're usually, if we're not gonna be intentionally dense here, they're usually referring to the abortion issue. People who say that they're pro-life usually mean that they are against people getting abortions, and people who say that they're pro-choice mean that they're in favor of people having the option to choose whichever is best for them, right? That's usually what people mean when they say that. They, they don't mean like pro-life as in, I am in favor of not currently being dead or pro-choices and I am in favor of having more options on the Cheesecake Factory menu. Like, that's not usually what they mean by that, right? So if we are to assume, as most people would, that this means that Dr. Oz is against abortion, first of all, is this is this his whole platform on it? Nothing else? Just he's pro-life because he's held a beating heart in his hands? Okay but have you held a beating heart inside your uterus, Dr. Oz? Do you, do you know how precious a woman's body is? Do you know how much havoc that pregnancy can unleash on somebody? Do you know that? 
Or is is the only life precious the, the beating heart that you literally held? What if the beating heart belonged to the pregnant woman and pregnancy had a chance to kill her? Then would you care? Or what if, what if she just didn't want to carry another person inside of you? Would you be willing to carry the child instead just to ensure that they stay alive? Do you think that anybody, anyone should be forced to do that? That the government has the right to tell us we have to incubate other people in our bodies? And while we're on that note, what do you think about the Third Amendment? Do you think that we should have to quarantine soldiers in our home? Do you think that we should have to host people? Like if a soldier soldiers come through town for like a war effort, do you think that we should be required to host them in our homes? The third amendment says we can't do that, but clearly we're supposed to have to host other people in our bodies. And like my body is my home. Like I own this thing. This, this belongs to me. This is, this is my home. I live in this body. And so if I had to host someone else in it, I don't see how that's unconstitutional right? I don't know. I Maybe I'm just the stupid one here, but Dr. Oz is pro-life. I don't want to watch this video because we've got too much more to talk about today. Oh, is Dr. Oz going to help small business? What are we going to do to help small business? No, I'm not giving you money. That's not going to help small business. Stop it with the pop-ups. Wow. I love how you have to click on each one of these and it takes you to a whole new screen and then each screen is just like two lines. Dr. Oz has started small companies and knows the challenges our small business owners face because of government regulations that stifle growth in the economy. So what are you planning to do to help small business owners? Secure government funded healthcare? That could help small business owners a lot because if they aren't burdened with having to be the one supplying healthcare to the employees because the government's already taking care of that, then you could leave a lot more room for people to invest in innovating in their new products and things like that or in hiring more people and raising the salaries because the money isn't being spent on health insurance. You know what, since you're a doctor, Dr. Oz, what are your thoughts on the health insurance industry? Wouldn't it be better if there were a universal public option? Medicare for all, perhaps? What are your thoughts on that, doctor? Does he have it on here? Does he have a, no, I'm not giving you money. Does he have anything about healthcare? No. Wow. For a doctor, you have nothing about healthcare. <laughs> wow, Dr. Oz. Anyway, Dr. Oz looks like he'd be an absolutely shit candidate for government. I do not want him there. His opponent. Let's take a look at Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. This man is large. John Fetterman is what I believe the Zoomers refer to as an absolute unit. And I mean this in the, the nicest way possible because this man is cool. Like when I looked him up, I thought that that this man must have been a retired professional athlete or something. I thought that's what he had to be. Oh, maybe this is a retired athlete that's going into politics now. Guess what, motherfucker? He played offensive tackle for the Lions. Anyway, John Fetterman is a big dude who used to play offensive tackle for the Lions. Fuck the Lions, but not John Fetterman and fuck Throw Rogan. So let's look at John Fetterman on the issues. So first of all, his issues page is much better organized. Look at these issues. Look at how when you click on an issue, it has multiple paragraphs as opposed to two lines that pop up on a new page that you have to hit the back button for. Just shout out to John Fetterman's web designer for doing a better job on that. Look, John Fetterman, who's not even the doctor, has a, a section on healthcare. What? All right, I don't live in Pennsylvania, but if I did, John Fetterman would have my vote. Not Dr. Oz, not, not Dr. Scammer over here. In the Senate, I will support any legislation that gets us closer to the goal of universal health care coverage. I'm less fixated on what you call it and more focused on the result, ensuring access to health care for every American. I will also support efforts to lower the Medicare eligibility age to 60 while expanding its benefits to include vision, hearing, and dental care. Look how specific that is. Dr. Oz didn't even have a health care section. Some doctor you are, Dr. Oz. More like Mr. Oz over here. During this past calendar year of 2022, the campaign battle of Dr. Oz versus John Fetterman has raged on. And during that battle, what better way to get the public at large invested emotionally in this fight than to do it with lots of memes. And that is right because Dr. Oz is more meme than man and John Fetterman has a sense of humor meant for the memes. These two have been going at it in their online meme war, which we're now going to take a look at as well. All right, so June 22nd, 2022. John Fetterman trolls Senate opponent Dr. Oz for distancing himself from Trump with clown meme. Oh, so Donald Trump has endorsed Dr. Oz for Senate, so 
That's cool. Democratic Pennsylvania Senate nominee John Fetterman trolled his GOP opponent Mehmet Oz on Wednesday with a meme after the latter muted former President Donald Trump on his website. He won with the endorsement of Trump who campaigned with him across the Commonwealth. So this reporter Andrew Solander noted on Tuesday that imagery celebrating Trump's support is now gone from Oz's campaign website. Solander noted Oz mentioned Trump on Twitter more than 70 times during the primary. The former president is not a part of Oz's race against Fetterman. Fetterman won in a landslide in spite of the fact that he suffered a stroke just before voters went to the polls. He has remained sidelined from campaigning for weeks as he continues to recover from surgery. It has not stopped the progressive from taking shots at Oz on social media. So, for example, this is, I believe, a screenshot from the show I Think You Should Leave on Netflix, which is hilarious. And it's them going, we're all trying to find the guy who did this when it's the dude in the hot dog suit is obviously the one who's guilty, right? And the tweet that it's referring to is Dr. Oz invests up to $715,000 in companies he blames for skyrocketing insulin costs. We're all trying to find the guy who did this. So this is kind of, from what I remember, the start of the meme war. So another person tweeted about how Dr. Oz got the name of his hometown wrong in his official statement of candidacy. And this starts the whole controversy about how while Dr. Oz is running for Pennsylvania government and while Dr. Oz is running for Pennsylvania seats in the Senate and while Dr. Oz has been trying to portray himself as someone who is just a down-home Pennsylvania guy, that he has actually executed most of his career in New Jersey and seems much more connected to that state. So, John Fetterman came in here with the Steve Buscemi from 30 Rock meme, which I love, the how do you do fellow kids meme, where it says, how do you do fellow PA residents? Because he's clearly pretending to be one. In a Wednesday post, Fetterman trolled Oz for his pivot away from using Trump as a focal point in his campaign. All right, here we go. New Jersey resident. Decides to run in PA Senate and just putting on more clown makeup. Desperate for Trump endorsement? Scrub Trump on own campaign site. In general, John Fetterman is just going at it with the memes, but they did not stop here. Lots of memes continued on. Here we go. New diss from Jersey for Dr. Oz's Senate run in Pennsylvania. Nomination to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. So the next prank on Dr. Oz was to nominate him for the New Jersey Hall of Fame. This may be one prestigious award that Dr. Mehmet Oz, the television personality turned Pennsylvania political candidate, doesn't want to win right now. Oz was just nominated by Bill Pascrell Jr., D 9th District, to the New Jersey Hall of Fame. It was the latest effort by supporters of Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman, the Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate from Pennsylvania, to highlight the out-of-state ties of his Republican opponent. I know a New Jersey and when I see one, Pascrell wrote in his nomination letter, as Dr. Oz's Garden State congressman and neighbor, I fully attest to Dr. Oz's New Jersey-ness. Oz won the Republican nomination with the support of former President Donald Trump and is running to succeed retiring Republican Patrick Toomey. The winner of the November election may well determine which party controls the Senate come January. Oz lived in a $2.9 million home in Cliffside Park for two decades. $2.9 million home, that's expensive. I'm not saying he's not allowed to have that home as many politicians have homes that expensive or more. I'm just saying I'm pretty sure a house that expensive has a yard. Dr. Oz is like, those with yards are trying to oppress those of us without yards. Bro, with that expensive of a home, there's no way you don't have a yard. You are one of the yard havers who oppresses us, Dr. Oz, it is you. I am the one who does not have a yard and I don't trust you. Earlier this month, the campaign flew a banner over the Jersey Shore to attract vacationing Pennsylvanians with the message, hey, Dr. Oz, welcome home to New Jersey. And Stephen Van Zant, a member of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band released a video featuring the musician and actor saying, what are you doing in Pennsylvania? Fetterman also enlisted the support of Nicole Snooky, Snooky from Jersey Shore. That's a throwback. So Snooky said, I heard that you moved from New Jersey to Pennsylvania to look for a new job. Dude, this is like high effort trolling. And then finally, as of the day that I'm filming this video, this just came up today saying Fetterman puts up billboards calling Oz a Cowboys fan. Pennsylvania Senate hopeful John Fetterman's campaign announced on Tuesday that it would be putting up two billboards ahead of an NFL Sunday matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and Dallas Cowboys calling Republican candidate Mehmet Oz a Cowboys fan. Dr. Oz is a Cowboys fan, the billboard reads, elect a real Pennsylvania and vote Fetterman for Senate on November 8th. The billboard also features a picture of Oz from 2013 at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, where the Dallas Cowboys play. The picture was taken from a post Oz tweeted that year in which he said, doing my best to audition for the Cowboys while we have access to their facility during my 15 minute physical. The billboards will be facing both northbound and southbound on I-95 north of the link, the locals name for Lincoln Financial Field where the Eagles play. According to the campaign, the billboards are expected to remain there until Monday and represent the Democrats' latest attempt to troll Oz as a carpetbagger in the state. 
The fact that Oz is willing to sell out his supposed Eagles fandom for clout when he's in Dallas may be a funny example of his inability to take real positions and hold consistent beliefs, but it's much more than that, Brendan McPhillips, Fetterman's campaign manager, said in a statement. This gets to the heart of who the guy really is. He pretends to be a Cowboys fan when he's in Dallas, but now that he's running for office, he tailgates at Eagles games like he's a real Philly fan. Now, what are some things that we can take away from all of this? Because right now this meme more seems like more of a hot mess than everything. And Dr. Oz himself is starting to seem like more meme than man with the fact that he's transformed from somewhat of a legitimate surgeon into just a standard run of the mill self-help grifter who is now trying to gain more clout and power for himself now as a politician. So what can we take away from any of this? Part of me wonders if this meme war between Dr. Oz and John Fetterman has been a good thing overall because at the end of the day, it's getting a lot of people invested. People on Twitter have been talking nonstop about this meme war and sharing the memes going back and forth and taking sides and things like that, including people who don't live in Pennsylvania and including people who don't even live in the US. It's getting a lot of people, even outside of those who are directly going to vote in this particular election, really interested in what's going on, which has then led to people actually looking up these candidates and their campaign websites and their plans and their takes on the issues, which could be a good thing for getting our youth more politically involved. A lot of times people complain about the fact that young people aren't voting as much, and I do think voting is extremely important. There are reasons, though, that people don't vote. It's not always just apathy. Sometimes it's it difficult with accessibilities of polling stations. Sometimes it's polling stations closing down and making it hard for people to get to places when it's convenient in their work schedule. There's a ton of reasons why it can be difficult to vote, but regardless, I do believe that it's important that you vote. By the way, guys, make sure you're registered to vote. It's important that we all vote on November. November 8th this year, okay? Make sure you're registered to vote. So part of me thinks maybe this is a good thing that they're getting so much attention on the internet like this because it's getting a lot of people involved and getting a lot of people talking about it. At the same time, the internet and internet culture and Twitter in general isn't necessarily indicative of what the population at large believes. If I could have believed my Twitter feed, then Bernie Sanders would have been president a long time ago based on how much overwhelming support I saw for him there as opposed to literally anyone else. A lot of times the people that are active on social media are a specific subset of the population tending to be people with more passionate beliefs on either sides of issues rather than the majority of just everyday people who are out there raising families and things like that. Although there are plenty of people on Twitter who manage to balance all of that. My point is just that not everyone is on social media, so you're not necessarily going to get an accurate representation of what the world at large believes. So as long as the campaigns are doing a good job of reaching voters who aren't online, I think that it's important important as long as John Fetterman's campaign is reaching those people as well and isn't just targeting people who would be interested in internet culture. I think that maybe this type of outreach is a good thing because now I, as someone who's not voting in this race because I'll be vo voting in Illinois, I, I still now know the ins and outs of Dr. Oz's campaign versus John Fetterman's campaign. I know their stances on the issues. I know what their plans are, things like that. And that makes me a more informed American citizen. And I got there because of lots of memes. But at the same time, is that kind of sad? Is it sad that doing things that gain you clicks and attention and clout on the internet is eventually what leads to people being more aware of you, which could lead to more power in government for you? But again, that's not a new phenomenon. While it takes a different form while it's on the internet, the fact is that people who were able to gain attention and gain notoriety in some way, whether, you know, in a negative way or a positive way, those have been always the people that have gained power. They say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. People who had no following whatsoever, even before the days of of the internet still had no chance at gaining a large following or a lot of power because that just wasn't how it worked. Money always helps, right? We all know that money is the biggest factor in a lot of these things. So I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on all this in the comments below. Do you think that Dr. Oz is a scammer? Do you think he should have his medical license taken away? What do you think about him as a person? Should I do more videos on him? And what do you think about the fact that so many memes are being used to fight this political battle? I'm curious on all of your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Please leave them there. Thank you again so much to Monk Pack for sponsoring today's video. I will see you guys again next week for more videos. But in the meantime, keep on supporting small businesses like in legitimate ways. You know how Dr. Oz was like, I support small businesses. Here's two lines on my website about how I know that small business owners have struggles and I promise to support them. I'm not going to tell you how though. Here's how to support small businesses. Buy from local shops. Buy from local farmers markets. Support local stores in your area that aren't owned by a bigger company. 
go online and if you are going to shop from Amazon, if you do have to get things delivered from Amazon, find smaller retailers to buy from there. Find smaller things to order online, like people who are hand crafters or find small publishers to buy books from on Amazon or independent authors or independent artists. Go out there and seek out people who aren't backed by a giant company. Support small businesses, support the people in your life, support your hometowns. We love you guys. Make sure you're registered to vote. Have a good weekend. Bye. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.